praise God for this opportunity and privilege of being here this evening. We want to thank you all uh, for tuning in uh, to our Bible study. And I trust that you have a blessed day today and that uh, all is well with you. Amen. We want to uh, begin our study with a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for this another chance. We thank you for this another opportunity to come before you. We thank you for Jesus Christ. We thank you for the privilege of being able to come boldly to your throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Lord, we thank you that you kept us all day long. Thank you that you give us a mind and desire spend time with you in your word and now we ask you that you open our understanding that we may understand the scriptures speak to our hearts we pray we ask you oh god that you will have your way in jesus name we pray amen bless you if you will open your bibles to the book of proverbs the book of proverbs uh, chapter three and i'm going to read verses one through six, the Old Testament book of Proverbs, uh, chapter three, and verses one through six are the verses that I want to read for our lesson on today. The verse said, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Amen. I want to use for a subject the need for divine guidance. The need for divine guidance. Amen. Solomon is the writer of this passage of scripture and uh, you know Solomon was given wisdom from God and, and Solomon speaks uh, words of wisdom uh, God gave him wisdom to share and, and, and he shared the wisdom that God blessed him with and uh, you know anytime God bless you with something he does not bless you for you to be selfish with it, but he blesses us so that we can be a blessing to somebody else. Solomon certainly uh, was a blessing, and he, and he blessed us with his wisdom. And listen to how he began this, this chapter. He says, my son, uh, forget not my law. Every father needs to give instructions uh, to his son. Uh, he needs to, to share with his son words of, of, of wisdom, words of how to conduct himself, uh, words that will help him uh, for life. And Solomon, he, he, he began by saying, my son, as parents, it is our responsibility uh, to teach uh, our children, to instruct them uh, in the way of godliness. Uh, and listen, your children don't ever get too grown uh, for us to give them words of instruction. Uh, you know, even after they good and grown, they still need to hear a word of instruction, uh, a, word, a reminder sometime from, from their parents. Uh, Solomon here 
Uh, he gives wisdom and instruction. Uh, we all need wisdom. Uh, the Bible says in James chapter 1, verse 5, if any lack wisdom, let him ask of God and give it to all men liberally. Uh, wisdom is available. Uh, the question comes, how does God give this wisdom? After you ask for wisdom, how does God give it to you? Well, just to mention a few ways that God gives it to you. Uh, Joel 32 and 7, Elihu tells us that, that the multitude of years uh, should teach wisdom. The older you get, the wiser we should become. Uh, amen. The experiences that, that we've had in life uh, uh, ought to help us to gain some wisdom. Uh, amen. So, so years, a multitude of years, uh, teaches us wisdom. But then observation, uh, you can... You can gain wisdom by observing. Uh, Proverbs 6 and 6 said, Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. Uh, he said, just watch the ant. If you watch that, don't expect the ant to say nothing because ants don't talk. Ants are silent workers. And, and he tells us if you watch ants, you can learn wisdom from some ants. We learn by observation. Uh, and then we get wisdom by listening to wise people. Amen. Just, uh, just listening uh, to those who are wise, who share words of wisdom. Uh, one thing that, that, that my, my, my parents always told me growing up, they always would warn me and caution me by saying, Son, don't be hard-headed. <laughs> You know, you need to listen to what I'm saying. And, and, and so we, we can learn, uh, get wisdom by listening, by listening to those who are, who are wise. But then uh, we get wisdom from God's word. The, the word of God gives us uh, the wisdom. He, he, he teaches us words of, of wisdom. And so as I look in this third chapter of the book of Proverbs, uh, there are three things I want to mention about these first six verses. First of all, he talks about the fundamentals. Uh, the fundamentals. He gives us the fundamentals. Listen to what he said. He said, uh, my son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. Verse 2, for length of days and long life and peace shall they add uh, to you. He, he tells us what's fundamental, the, the, the basic things of life. He says that, that, that listen, you need, to, you need to obey my law. You need to follow my commandments. Uh, this, this, this addresses one's behavior. Uh, he said, behave yourself and, 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 and do what I have taught you. That's the fundamental thing to, 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 to listen and take heed to, to what you've been taught. Uh, he says that uh, that, will, that will help your behavior. Uh, but then he also uh, lets us know that if you do that, you'll get a blessing. And look at what the blessing is. The blessing is for length of days. And long life and peace shall they add to you. Amen. He, he said, if you want to, if you want to live long, if you want to, 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 to enjoy life, he said that the way to enjoy life is to follow my instructions. Listen to the teachings of God's word. That's the fundamentals. But then in verses three and four. He talks about favor. He talks about favor. He addresses the issue of favor. Listen to what he says. He said, let not mercy and truth forsake thee. 
Bind them about thy neck and write them upon the table of thine heart. So shall thou find favor in the sight of God and man. He said, listen, son, don't ever get away from mercy and truth. He said, I want you to wear it like a necklace. I want, I want it to be so a part of you that people will know that it's obvious that you believe in mercy and truth. And he said, what will happen? You can gain favor with God and with man. Amen. He said, you got to be merciful. You got to give people another chance. You got to be forgiven. You got to be faithful if you want to find favor from God and man. But then thirdly, the third thing he addresses is our future. Our future. And that's what I want to talk about in verses 5 and 6. He says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And don't lean to your own understanding. He said, in all your ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct your path. Listen, he tells us, look, if you want to be successful and have a wonderful future, you need divine guidance. Amen. Divine guidance is what is needed. The question comes, preacher, what is divine guidance? Well, it is to be led by God. It is to follow the leadings of the Holy Spirit. The question then comes, why do we need divine guidance? Well, first of all, we need it because life is too much for us to handle on our own. Amen. It's too great for us to handle on our own. There's so much in life you can't fix on your own. Amen. There's too much in life that you can't, you can't handle, you can't carry all by yourself. Amen. It's too big for you. There, there, are, too many, there are too many trials and tragedies and turmoils and tensions and troubles. That you can't handle on your own. Amen. So we need divine guidance. And then another reason why we need divine guidance. Because Jeremiah 10 and 23 says that the way of man is not in himself. This is what the verse said. Oh Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. We don't have it within us. To guide ourselves. Amen. You know, uh, one of the descriptions that God uses uh, uh, to describe his people is that uh, he calls us his sheep. You know, uh, Jesus talked about us being uh, his sheep and that he is the shepherd. Okay? Sheep are not like dogs and cows and horses. Uh, they go off in the pasture, in the wood. They can find their way back. But with sheep, sheep easily get lost. And sheep have to be led by a shepherd. Amen. And so man, it's not in man to guide himself. Amen. It's not, it's not man is, is unable to guide himself. There's a whole lot in life you have already faced. You couldn't guide yourself through it. But because it's just too much for you. We need divine guidance. Here's another reason why we need divine guidance. The devil is our enemy. He's a deceiver. He's a trap setter. And the devil is out to destroy. He's out to mess up. He's out to damage our lives. Amen. We need divine guidance. The devil is good at what he does. He's a master at deception. He's a master at setting traps. And listen, you can't get past all the traps by yourself. We need divine guidance. The devil can use people 
And he does use people to set traps for us. And we can't figure out where they are. Sometimes we don't even know who set them. But when God is guiding us, he can help us to get around it. Amen. So you need, we need divine guidance because the devil is always setting traps. You know, uh, in this world we live in, there are many people who can be kind and compassionate. Wonderful thing about many people who can be loving and gentle and helpful. You know, what a blessing to, to, to know and to come in contact, to be around people like that. But on the other hand, some folk can be mean, messy, and meddling. Some people can be cold, cruel, and crooked. And you can't handle these folk on your own. We need divine guidance. And so, with that in mind, my brothers and sisters, as we look at the verse, listen to what he says. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. The first thing I'm going to bring out about that verse is the availability of divine guidance. Divine guidance is available. Nobody can ever say that when I needed guidance, God did not make it available. No, sir. No, ma'am. Divine guidance is available. Amen. Nobody has to go through life blinded. Nobody has to go through life just wondering because divine guidance is available. <laughs> it's available. God does guide. God's word tells us that divine guidance is available. Listen, Psalm 37 verse 23 says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delighted in his way. That teaches us that divine guidance is available. Look, when you look back over the scriptures, we see many examples of the fact that divine guidance is available. When you look at Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, verse said, verse 1, Now the Lord has said unto Abram, Get thee from among thy kindred, from thy father's house, from thine own country, Unto a land that I will show thee. The Hebrew writer came along in verse in chapter 11 of the book of Hebrews and said, By faith Abraham went out not knowing where he was going. Remember that? But now listen, even though he didn't know where he was going, he knew who was guiding him. Mm -hmm. God will guide you. You may not know where God is taking you, but he will guide you. Amen. So God guided Abraham, and he became the father of the faithful. God guided Israel. When they walked out of Egypt, no more to be slaves. When you read in Exodus 13 and 21, look what the verse said. And God led them with a pillar of cloud by day to lead them the way. Amen. God was leading them. He led them because divine guidance is available. Saul, king of Israel, had messed up and God had rejected him. And the 16th chapter of 1 Samuel tells us that God spoke to Samuel and said, Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul, seeing that I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? He said, fill your horn with oil and go down to the house of Jesse. I've chosen one of his sons to be the next king of Israel. Samuel went down there, and when he uh, got in there, he saw Jesse's oldest son, and he said, surely this must be the Lord's anointed. You know, he, he just looks like he's kingly. He just stands like a king. But God spoke to him and guided him and said, Samuel, he's not the one. I have rejected him. 
He said, man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. God guided Samuel. And then there was Elijah. You remember him, Elijah the Tishbite in 1 Kings chapter 17, when he told King Ahab, there won't be any rain until I say so. He left there and God directed Elijah, told him, turn the eastward and go down to the brook called Cherith. I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. And when the brook dried up, God told him, arise and go to Zarephath. Divine guidance, brothers and sisters, is available. And so that's the first thing. By virtue of the fact that he talks about it here in this verse, it lets us know that divine guidance is available. The second thing I see in the verse is the attitude for divine guidance. We see, first of all, the availability. Now we see the attitude. What kind of attitude must one have in order to experience divine guidance? Here it is. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Amen. That's the attitude. We got to trust God. Notice, in order for you to experience divine guidance, you can't trust in anything or anybody else. You are not to put all your confidence in anything else. You know, trusting in your money won't get it. Trusting in your own abilities won't get it. Trusting in your education won't get it. It's good to have it. Thank God for it. But if you trust in your education, your education, there's a whole lot of things. Education not going to get you through. If you just trust in your reputation, that won't get you through the tough times of life. The text said you got to trust in the Lord. Amen. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Trust him with all your heart, is what the verse said. Jeremiah 17, verse 7 said, Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. And so he says, you got to put all your confidence in God. Trust him with all your heart, not just some of it. You can't hold back on God when it comes to trusting him. Have you ever looked at um, in scripture, uh, what the Bible has has often uh, told us about uh, when it comes to God, how he wants all your heart. Just to mention a few, we ought to seek him with all our heart. We ought to serve him with all our heart. We ought to love the Lord with all our heart. We ought to obey him with all our heart. We ought to turn to him with all our heart. We ought to praise him with all our heart. And the text said we got to trust him with all our heart. He said the attitude we should have is one of trusting in God with all your heart. What do you mean trust God? My mind went back today. Uh, when I have to, have to go to the doctor and he give me a prescription, it's not like it used to be. Anybody listening to me remember the days when the doctor wrote out your prescription and uh, you couldn't even read it? <laughs> but yet, even though we couldn't read it, couldn't understand what, what was written on there, we took it to the pharmacist who we didn't know, who put some stuff in there that we didn't know nothing about, put instructions on it, told us how to take it, and we took it. Now, think about it. We trusted what the doctor had written, what the pharmacist had put in that bottle, and took it. If we had to take it three times a day, we took it. Didn't know nothing about it. We didn't know whether that stuff was going to kill us or not, but we took it because we trusted. Why can't we trust God? God Almighty, who holds everything in the palm of his hand, trust him. There is no failure in God. Man has failed time and time again, but God has never failed. Trust in the Lord. If we want to experience divine guidance, 
We have to trust in the Lord with all our heart. But then the third thing is, in the text, I see the admonition concerning divine guidance. He gives us a word of caution, a word of warning. When I use the term admonition, this is what he says. And lean not unto thine own understanding. That's what he said in the verse. That word lean has to do with uh, uh, the leaning of one's whole body on something to be strengthened by it or to be supported by it. That's what he's talking about when he said lean is to put your all on it. You know, and all he said in the verse, don't rely on anything else that you were thinking about. He said, don't, don't rely on yourself. Don't rely on your thoughts and your plans. He said, don't rely on you doing it your way. He said, lean not unto thine own understanding. And listen, a whole lot of us have gotten ourselves in trouble Behind leaning to our own understanding. Amen. There might be somebody listening to me. You ended up marrying the wrong person. Because you leaned to your own understanding. You walked away from a church where God had put you because you were leaning to your own understanding. You regret having left the job that you had. Because you went after this other job that didn't turn out like you thought. Leaning to your own understanding. Leaning to your own understanding can get us in a world of trouble. There are some witnesses. The reason why God rejected Cain's offering was because he leaned to his own understanding. Abraham and Sarah tried uh, to get a child before time because it was Sarah in Genesis 16 that suggested to Abraham, look, uh, I'm not able to have a child and I don't got old, but I got a handmaid named Hagar. And it may be that God's going to bless us with a child through her since she's my servant, since she's my slave. And Abraham didn't go against it. And the Bible said he got with Hagar. And she became pregnant. And listen, rather than have an Isaac, they got an Ishmael. All because they tried it their way. You understand? Whenever you try to do things your way, it's the wrong way. We need to seek divine guidance. David tried to bring the Ark of the Covenant back to the city of David on an ox cart. But God messed up his plan. And when he found out how God wanted it done, he was able to get it right the second time. There's a need for divine guidance. And we need to beware of leaning to our own understanding. But then, next of all, as I look at the verse, I see the acknowledgement for divine guidance. The acknowledgement. This is what he says. In all thy ways. Acknowledge him. That's what the verse says. In all your ways. Now that's simply saying. Don't leave God out. Don't make a move. Don't make a step. Without checking with the Lord. He said in all your ways. That, that means everything. We need God in everything. In every difficulty. In every distress, every decision, facing every danger, we need God. We need God in prosperity. We need him in popularity. We need him in parenting. We need him in plans. We need him on this pilgrimage. And we need him in dealing with stuff that we've done in the past that come back to home. We need him. Amen. We need God in all your ways. Acknowledge him. Don't leave God if you want divine guidance, then don't just include God in some things, but you need to seek God in everything, in all your ways. 
But then finally, finally, I see the assurance of divine guidance. Listen to what the assurance is. He shall direct your path. Amen. You know what? When I first wrote this out, I put uh, right here, closing, <laughs> because, look, this stuff will preach. <laughs> Amen. Assurance. He shall direct you. We have a promise that he will direct your path. You can count on the Lord. Amen. This is what the verse said. He shall. Listen. Every child of God need to be a part of God's shall program. Amen. God shall program. Job was in it. Job said, he knoweth the way that I take. And when he had tried me, I shall come forth as pure gold. Psalm 37 says, delight thyself in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Isaiah 40 said, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Everybody need to be a part of God's shall program. We have a promise. We count on the fact that God will give us direction that he will guide us. Listen, in this time that we're living in, in this pandemic, we need divine guidance. We need God to help us. We need him to show us the way. Amen. And I just believe if enough doctors, if enough scientists, if our leaders of our country, if enough people get together and cry out to the Lord, he'll help us. Amen. He'll give us the cure. Amen. And so the promise is he shall. Direct your path. So as I close, you know what we can say, Lord, show me the way. I don't know which way to go. Lord, show me what to do. Guide me. Every step I take, every move I make, I need you to guide me. Let Jesus lead you. Amen. I want to encourage you. Let Jesus lead you all the way. There's a song we used to sing that I love this. Love, try to sing now, even now. He said, I need the Lord to guide me every day as I travel along this narrow way. Though afflictions press my soul, I'm determined to reach my goal. I got to have Jesus because I just can't make it by myself. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we need divine guidance. God teaches us in his word how to get it. And so let's do what we need to do. And God will guide us. Amen. Whatever you're facing right now, whatever you're going through, I want you to know divine guidance is available. If you strayed away from God, it's a good time to come back to him. Say, Lord, forgive me. I strayed away. I repent of my sin. And I can return to you. And I need you to guide me. And let God be your guide. Amen. God bless you.